Hello beautiful people and welcome to the channel Life After Narc. My name's Debbie and I talk about all things to do with narcissistic, abusive and toxic relationships as well as healing from them. Today's topic is going to be going no contact with the narcissist. If you do enjoy the video content, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share the video with friends or on formats, social media, wherever you think people may benefit from the video. So going no contact with the narcissist, what does that mean? Well, it means having zero contact whatsoever with your ex-narcissist, ex-partner, your, your abusive partner, whether you've left them or they've left you, going no contact is the best way to be. Because of the trauma bond that, that forms with a relationship where we have the love bombing, the idealization phase, and then we have the devaluation phase, these two opposing forces create hormones within our body that make us addicted to the um, love bombing, idealization and devaluation phase. So we are in effect trauma bonded to this person. And when they leave or we leave them, there's a part of us that wants them back in our lives. And the temptation is so strong to phone them, to send them a message. Say, I love you. I miss you. Please come back to me and so on. And this just causes and creates more hurt as well as giving supply to the narcissist. So in order to prevent pain for ourselves and to prevent prolonging this hurt, this agony that we're going through at the end of this relationship, going no contact is the best way to be. So that's blocking them on all social media. That's Insta, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, wherever you have an account as well as places like LinkedIn. Try and block them on your email if you can, block them on your phone. Now I know that some of you will have children and you will need to keep a communication channel open in order to have that, um, you know, when you're going to pick up the children, when you're going to bring them back and discussions and so on. What I would advise and what I've seen in most uh, situations like this is that you email each other because then you have a record of everything that's been discussed and said and try not to be dragged into that conversation that they may start with you. How are you? What are you doing? And then you start to say things like, I miss you. I want you back. And it becomes this toxic cycle that we go around in. And it's no good for us because it takes us back to where we were in the relationship and we start all over again. It's just this vicious, never ending cycle. It's hard to go no contact. I know. I, I really do understand because there's a part of you that wants to go and have a look at their profile pages and see what are they doing? Are they happy? Are they with somebody new? So all of these thoughts that you've had, these suspicions that you've had around, are they seeing somebody? Have they left me for somebody? You want confirmation of this. You want to know, is this what they've been doing? You're looking for closure without realizing that you're looking for closure. So you may unblock them and have a look and see what they're doing. And then this sets off the emotions within you all over again. You're sad, upset. You see them happy with somebody else. But you need to remember they're not really happy. It's all fake. They don't love anybody. They only love themselves. They're this hollow vessel and they mirror the other person and take on all that person's personality and all their traits in order to gain that person in their life so they can gain that um, supply and it's no good looking at that it's no good looking at the past I went through my phone and deleted every single photograph of him I went through my Facebook page went through all of my photos it took me ages to delete every single photo of him that I would posted um, comments and so on where I was tagged it was yeah it takes a long time they are things that need to be done. You don't need that reminder in your life. You're moving on now. You're healing. You're getting over this narcissist. You're getting over this toxic, abusive person in your life. And it's time for you to let them go. Let them be somebody else's problem. Look after yourself and put yourself first. You'll also want to play the block on block game. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. So you'll block them and then you'll think, oh, but what are they doing? So you unblock, you see what they're doing. Oh, no, I don't want them to see what I'm doing. So you reblock. Now, 
you can on some uh, platforms change your uh, posts to uh, private so only friends can see so you can change your um, privacy on Facebook for example um, but be careful because the narcissist will pick up on things that you say and they are still getting supply from you even through social media they are still getting their supply because they know that they've hurt you they know that you want to see what they're doing and this gives them that supply so it's, ha you know she still likes me she still wants me back in her life she's looking at me she's stalking me on on facebook or whatever platform it is try not to get into that place you may do it once or twice but then try to cut out that longing for them it will happen in time it will happen that you will no longer want to see what they're doing and think to yourself well it's just making me ill it's just making me forget about who I am and forget about my own healing and my own moving forwards and that's what you want at this time you want to be able to move forwards you want to be able to heal from this person even though there's a part of you that still wants to go back or still wants them back in your life it is heartbreaking when we see them in pictures looking happy perhaps with another partner the person that they left us for or somebody new in their life and we don't need it we've already gone through enough of our own heartache why should we put ourselves through this pain and hurt again going back multiple times into a relationship ruined my early 20s late teens i was with a narcissist at the time who uh, this is back in the day when there were no mobile phones there were no um video calls you know there was no internet even so it was all landline calls and visiting people and um you know i i'd still get hold of him somehow and, and ask please can i come back and he'd contact me and say please can i please can you come back and this narcissistic trauma bond was just so strong between us and it it was horrendous i think when i think back he was a grandiose narcissist when i think back to it that relationship was probably worse than what i have gone through recently but at the same time it wasn't as long as my most recent relationship and it was many many years ago so there's this time frame where you sort of forget a lot of the nuances a lot of the things that happened um but i i used to sing in a band and he was uh the cameraman for the band and uh I left the band because of him you know I wish I hadn't I wish I hadn't changed that part of my life because I loved it um, and we change ourselves and mold ourselves to these people to become what they want even though he probably wanted me to be in the band he also wanted to isolate me he took me 1450 miles away from my home eventually that's we were living in Johannesburg and then we moved to Cape Town. It's a very, very big distance between the two cities. You'll be finding it hard because you want closure and you'll want this person to say to you, look, I'm sorry, this, that, and the next thing, this is the reason and so on. But whatever they say to you, it's a lie. It's rubbish. It, it's hurtful. It's hateful. And you don't really want to go through that. You really don't. So if you can, keep them blocked in all avenues unless of course you have children or assets that you need to sort out then as I say use email if you can so you have that written proof that this is what was said and it's not so easy to be taken into a personal or private conversation it's better to stay on fact on subject on point and not slide off into feelings and emotions it's a time for you to stay strong when you feel that need to ring them to message them to look at their facebook pages and their profiles remember to look at your list that list that i've spoken about in so many of my other videos that list that you made with all the nasty horrible things that the narcissist did to you during your relationship and remember this is what they did to you this is how they made you feel try and keep that list close to hand and try and keep those things in your mind while you are going through this stay strong you're a survivor you're becoming a thriver don't let this person suck the life out of you again 
I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Blessed be.